As I build my hidden staging yard, I needed a video monitor to follow the position of trains in that yard. So I built an easy, inexpensive system, and I'm going to show you how on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and I've been building a hidden staging yard behind the new section of my layout. Now, if you've been following my progress on video, you've already seen how I built the bench work, the control panel, and how I designed the system for routing trains into this hidden staging yard. But being a hidden yard, I needed some way to be able to monitor the position of trains within the yard, and so I decided to install a simple video and monitor system. Now, this is not an area where I wanted to break the bank, so I decided to try a aftermarket backup camera and monitor designed for automotive use. I purchased these off of Amazon and I got them very, very reasonably. Now, if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. But now, let me show you how I installed this simple, inexpensive monitoring system. This video is brought to you by Midwest Model Railroad. Now with 15,000 square feet and one day shipping, they truly are your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. I needed to be able to pull trains into this staging yard while on the layout side of the wall. So I decided to try this backup camera and this monitor designed for automotive use. I purchased both at Amazon and both combined cost less than $65. I'll post a link to them in the description under my Amazon pick of the week if you'd like to check them out. I tested them together at the workbench to see how they were going to work. I lost some of the footage of installing the camera, but the threaded nipple that you see here is removable and the camera comes with mounting tape which I used to mount it to the wall at the far end of the staging yard, as you can see here. Orientation is important here, as your image will be right side up or upside down, depending on how you mount the camera. This is a wide angle lens, so you will get a bit of a fish eye look from it, but it worked okay for me. The monitor comes with a stand designed to mount on the dash of an automobile, but I wanted to mount it to the fascia of my layout. So I removed the stand and 3D printed a part for mounting it. There is simply one bolt and nut that holds the monitor to the stand. I used my calipers set on millimeters to take some measurements and some notes for designing a new mounting bracket. I designed that bracket in Tinkercad, a free online computer-aided drawing program that uses simple geometric shapes and easy dimension entry to combine into the parts that you want. I've seen some pretty impressive designs created on Tinkercad, but what I needed here was very simple and comprised of only five total shapes combined. I then downloaded that shape and ran it through the slicer program that came with my Creality Ender 2 version 3 PLA printer. And then I started printing. This small basic shape took only about 35 minutes to print. By the way, I love my Creality 3D printer for filament printing. The parts are strong, and though not as finely detailed as SLA or resin printers produce, it still is a fantastic printer and very useful in my model railroading hobby. I also have used it for printing a number of items for around the house. If you're interested in the Creality 2, I'll put a link to it in my Amazon Pick of the Week in the description as well. In no time, my part was done and ready to test. I test fit the part on the monitor. Now, I did find that my first print fit a little bit too loosely on the monitor, so I did make some adjustments and print it a second time. When I was happy with the part, I selected the location for the monitor on the fascia, made a level guide mark, and simply screwed the bracket to the fascia with a couple of screws. I drilled a half-inch hole in the fascia below the bracket for the wires to feed through. 
I needed to make it this large because of the RCA plugs on the ends of the wires. I then mounted the monitor to the bracket. Connecting the system together is incredibly easy. The camera comes with a very long cable as it is designed to be able to reach from the rear of a car to its dashboard. I routed it from the camera through the bench work to where the monitor was mounted. The system is powered through the monitor. It comes with a power plug which I wired directly into the 12 volt accessory bus on my layout. Then it was a simple matter of plugging the power into the monitor and the two yellow video wires together and you're done. Now, this monitor isn't what I would want to watch TV on, but for seeing where my trains are in the staging yard, it works just fine. I made a label with a label maker to mark which tracks were which, and my video monitor was fully functional. Again, this is a simple, inexpensive monitor, but it works very well for following the position of trains through my staging yard. Now, there certainly are cameras and monitors that would produce a better quality image, but for my purposes, I'm perfectly happy with this system, and there are other places that I would rather spend that extra money. Now, don't forget to take a look at the parts that I used for this system in the description down below under my Amazon Pick of the Week, and be sure and check out my Micromark promo code and the other valuable links that you'll find down there as well. If you'd like to see how I complete this entire staging yard and routing build, as well as other model railroad content, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great model railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. Tin Lizzie?